Good morning, good morning. God bless everybody out there in social media world. This is a beautiful, wonderful day that the Lord has made, Amen. and we're going to rejoice, and we're going to be glad in it. And I am so excited today, amen, for another beautiful day in the kingdom of God for such a time as this. So I want to say I thank you for joining us on today. Thank you for joining me every Tuesday morning, amen, setting this aside of time. I'm sorry, setting this time aside, looking for this moment. Today we have a wonderful show lined up for you today. So first of all, I need you to share. I need you to go ahead and share, start your watch party, get your pen out, get your paper out, have your, uh, your training paraphernalia, because we have a word for the, from the Lord on today. We have a great topic, great conversation today with Let's Talk with Apostle Mary Richardson. And so God has been doing some great things. God has been doing some great things, and we're in an era. We're in an era, y'all, and let me tell you something. I just got to drop this on you right now. Can I go ahead and drop this missile on you right now? We're in an era where Revelations 11 and 15 is coming into manifestation. The Bible says the kingdom of this world has now become the kingdom of our Lord. The kingdom of this world has now become the kingdom of our Lord. The kingdom of heaven suffer violence, but the violent is taking it by force. And so we're so excited, amen, to be in this era and to be demo a demonstration of God's glory because the Bible says signs and wonders shall follow those that believe. So today I have an awesome woman of God in the studio with me on today. Amen. And that parish. And I want to say I thank you so much. Amen. Thank you for, for so much for being my guest today in the studio. And so right now I'm going to allow you to look into that camera and I want you to tell all of the world, tell the tell nations, good morning and introduce yourself to the people of God and good those morning. that will be watching. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. My name is Evangelist Parrish. I'm the founder of Women of Wisdom Outreach Ministry. I serve under the on honor of Bishop Joe Hallman from Greater Works Ministries. And this is Mary Apostle, Apostle Mary Richardson, of whom I love and been under for 20 years. Amen, amen, it's a woman of God. I say, like I say once again, I am so excited. I am too. I am so excited to see that, you know, what God has done in your life. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about, as a matter of fact, this month, we're going to be talking about people that has been delivered from drugs, from alcohol. We're going to talk about their, from there to here, what happened in between, what happened in between, and how God has delivered us and set us free. And so Annette uh, uh, I'm sorry, Evangelist uh, Parrish is a product. She is a product of God's great deliverance, a product. And you know, the Bible says, God is really, really blessed this morning. God bless you, Pastor Gus Fowler. Thank you. Amen. We got your seat ready for you on next week. All right. So we want to thank Betty Thomas for watching. Chris, God bless you. Thank you for watching this morning. And all of you all that will come, make sure you share. But you know, the Lord was speaking to me on the way here. And God spoke to me about Revelation 3 and 21. Okay. And Revelation 3 and 21 say, They that overcometh, mm -hmm. they that overcometh, he shall grant them to sit on his throne. Amen. Lord, I wanted to look. I had to, it, it took everything within me to keep both hands on the steering wheel. Because I just wanted to stop right there for a minute and just give God a praise. He that overcometh, Amen. the Bible say he will grant us. A place that's a place of authority that we can sit on his we can sit in his throne with him that we can begin to share into the benefits share into the revelation and just be able to share into God's kingdom and that is Amen. so awesome because he said just as he overcame we have overcome too and so also um sister Vera God bless you thank you for joining um Romans 8 19 the whole earth is moaning and groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the power of God. People have been waiting for this moment to know that there is power, there is authority in the church that God can deliver His people. Amen. So let's go ahead and get it. Let's go ahead and get this thing started, girl. Amen. Amen. So I'm so excited. So I met you over 20 years ago. Yes. I met you over 20 years ago, and God had allowed me to go into the jails, you all. Amen. I had a jail ministry. I had a jail ministry, and I was teaching a class 
called Walking the 12 Steps with Jesus Christ. Now, I know there are a lot of 12-step programs out there, but this one that I was teaching, amen, you didn't have an option because in some programs, well, in most 12-step programs, you have an option. They will, uh, you, you can choose a dog to be your higher power. You can choose anything you want, a person to be your higher power. But in this training, she didn't have an option, y'all. She didn't have an option and she could not get away because Jesus Christ was that higher power. And so this, it has been over 20 years ago. 20 years ago. And you're still here. I'm still here. And you're still doing wonderful. I'm still doing wonderful. Still growing leaps and bounds and, and all of that. And I'm just so excited because the Bible say, pray that your fruit remain. Amen. And so I pray for you that my fruit remain. And so now, who would have ever thought 20 years later that we would have been talking to nations today about God, God's power to deliver and to keep Amen. us delivered. Because Ecclesiastes 3 and 14 says, what God do, it is done forever Ever. that men might fear him. So guess what, Satan? You don't even have, you don't, you don't even have a say-so in the matter. Amen. We got handcuffs on you today. You are choked in the realm of the spirit. And so you have no authority here. And so we're here today to exalt God and to give him glory. And so, woman of God, I am so excited. Amen. Why, why don't you tell us about what happened that day? Uh, you were in the Polk County Jail. First of all, let me ask you, how long were you on drugs? 20 years. 20 years. I was on drugs 20 tell years. Us a little, tell the people a little bit about your experience uh, about being on drugs, and let's talk about that. Well, first of all, my drug of choice was cocaine. Um, and coming from a broken home kind of led up to that. And then being in the wrong place with the wrong crowd of people, I just got caught up in that lifestyle. And that lifestyle led me for 20 years up down a dark, wow, lonely road. what you road. say, girl? 20, was, go ahead, I'm sorry, go that ahead. Was a, that was a hard, lonely road, very dark. You didn't know day to day from whether you was gonna make it. But I made wow. it. I wow. made it. From day to day. From day to day. No vision. No hope. No hope. There were probably days you didn't even know what day it was. Oh, for real? Yeah. There were probably days that you did not even know what day it was. Yeah. Because that's what happened when you're on drugs. I've never in my life seen a demon like that. I've never seen a demon like crack cocaine. You know, you, you say, I'm not going to do it. And it'll say, yes, you are. And you say, no. And it say, yes. Yes. And when you know anything, amen, you are out there. And as she say, it's days. It can turn into days. It can turn into weeks. And it is very, very tormenting, y'all. It is very, very tormenting. And so now to see that. Uh, the power of God has come and set us free. And she met God in the Polk County Jail. Yes. In the Polk County Jail. So did you ever think, did you ever see God delivering you in the Polk County Jail? Did you ever see your deliverance coming in that form? I did not. You did I, not? I, I never seen that. I never seen that. Um, I, seen God, I seen jail as a rescue place for me to get rest, to get food, to get nourished, and get back out on the street. That's what I seen jail as. I never seen jail as, I mean, at nothing else. I didn't see God in jail. Amen. Until I, until I, met, until I met you and a few other women that came right. and told us about him. Right. And you know, that's what happened when a person is on drugs. Good morning, Annette McCants. God bless you, Sally. God, BB, God's B, best B, I'm sorry. Thank y'all for joining us on this morning. But that's what happened when you're out there on drugs and you, you know, you want to you wanna go to jail. I was glad to go to jail. Yes. Because it was a form of relief. Yes. It was a form of, you know, uh, being rescued, we thought. Well, we, we, we didn't know what God was doing, but, you know, you want to get out because you look for answers everywhere. Mm -hmm. And nobody can help you. Nobody can help you. And so here you are, you're on this cycle. Yes. You're on the cycle of, you know, jail. You, you know, you keep going back, yes. you keep going back. What happened, what happened at that breaking point? The breaking point what came because the, I felt the, like I was on a bicycle. I, like I was steady riding and I was, there was no end. Mm -hmm. And I knew there had to be an end with a change because I felt like I was riding on the same road with nowhere I was going. Mm -hmm. I would go to jail, stay a few days, get back, come out, do the same stuff over again, go back to jail. The cy I was cycling the same pattern every day. And, and I needed to change. You needed to change. I needed and, to change. And listen at this, you all. 
This is a Jeremiah 1 and 12 moment. I'm telling y'all, the word of God is so powerful. God said he sent his word to heal us and deliver us from all, all of our destruction. This is a Jeremiah 1 and 12 moment that God said he watches over his word to perform it. He said he watches over his word to perform it. Then Proverbs 20 and, 20, 20 and 24 says, man's going is of the Lord. How in the world could he even understand his way? Wow. So he was God watching over his word to perform it. And he allowed her to land in the Polk County Jail. Her deliverance came from a very uncommon place. Yes. From a very uncommon place. And you know, before, before we go any further, I used to always ask God. I said, God, I've never in my life seen anything like crack cocaine. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen a demon like this. And I'm saying, God, I know you got people out there that are crying out. I know there are people that wants to be delivered. God, why are you not delivering those people? And God spoke to me and God said, before I bring out a people, I'll always raise up a person. All right. He said, I will raise up a person. Then I will send that person back and tell Pharaoh, let them go. Oh, amen. Let them go. All right. Let them go. So this is what happened in the Polk County Jail with you that day. But what happened? What happened through that training? What happened through that class? Through that class, I was able to learn who I was and whose I was. I was able to get a better uh, understanding of my identity. What were your experience when you was in the class and you would leave the class? Well, my what was your experience that you were meeting God in that place? It was different for me because I was raised in a church, but I was raised in a Baptist church. So I had Baptist knowledge. I didn't have the full knowledge of what I needed. And being an adult in the county jail and you coming in, teaching the raw word, it gave me a better understanding of where I fell at and how to get back to where I come from. So what happened when you would come into the trainings and then you would go back into your cell? You would go back into that eight feet cell and you was there all alone and you was there to just, you know, not knowing which way life is gonna go. Cause that's what happened when you go to jail. Yes. And you're locked up behind those walls and those bars you don't know what is going to happen because you're trapped. But what happened in the, from, the, from those trainings, uh, the testimony, the word of God, and just to encounter that God? The training helped me to, to go back to my cell and want to study more, read more, pray more, and ask God for more guidance. So this time, when I get out, it will be different. Did you hear my voice? I did hear your voice because I, I would go back and repeat what I heard you say. And I would say to God, Lord, if you did it for that lady, God, did, I heard what she said God did for her. And if he did it for you, he said in his word, he have no respect for person. So I know I'm way down here, God, but I know you can come get me. I know you can rescue me if you did it for this lady. And you gave us the, the I mean, the ugly truth about yourself. And I knew I had an ugly truth about me, so I wanted deliverance. And I got that. So was it exciting seeing that someone else had been before and has now become an overcomer and that God would send me back into the Polk County Jail? So be it was it. exciting to see that. Yeah. And that really made an excitement in my heart to know there was hope for me. That's what it gave me, hope. So we see the power of our testimony, uh, people of God. We see the power of our testimony. And that reminds me of what he told Peter. He said, after you've been converted, after you've been converted, then you go back and you strengthen your brother. You go back and you strengthen your brother. So just my testimony alone, God bless you, Amida Apopa from Bermuda. We have Bermuda in the house with us on today. Amen. Patricia Beck, God bless you all. But that's the power of a testimony. Sometimes just our testimony alone mm. will bring people into deliverance. You know, the woman at the well, she didn't know anything about Jesus. She didn't know anything about Jesus, the people, but she told those people, you got to come see a man. Not, she didn't say come to my church, but she said, you got to come see a man that told me everything. Just her testimony alone brought so much deliverance to the kingdom of God. And this is what happened. God sent me in that Polk County Jail just to get her. And so when was your, uh, so what does my birthday and your uh, deliverance and all of that has to do with? with this. I was released from Polk County Jail um, on her birthday, August 17th. How ironic. Um, and me and her met up. Uh, she came to Frostproof to see me. 
um, on her birthday. So it was exciting. And this August 17th, I will be celebrating 20 years clean and free by choice. And so look at the follow-up, y'all. God used me, and I'm not and I'm not tooting my horn today, but I am sitting in the seat of authority. And as uh, Sharon has said in a Bermuda, God is ready to do it for someone today. God is ready to do it for someone Amen. today. So this is not just a, you know, I'm looking at Apostle Richardson on Facebook. I'm looking at Let's Talk. No, this is a divine appointment for somebody. Somebody out there that's struggling with drugs. You have a family member that's struggling with drugs. You have someone, you know, everybody, everybody knows somebody that has a drug addiction. And one of the things about a drug addiction, because you don't know what is happening. You don't know what is happening. And I had to learn this after God delivered me. Because I wanted to know, why did I stay on that cycle for so long? Yeah. And when I began to do a research, I began to find out that in our bodies, there's a chemical called dopamine. It's called dopamine. And so once a person take a hit of crack cocaine, that your body, your body depletes itself from the dopamine. And it takes a whole year, according to scientists, according to research, it takes a whole year for the body to replenish it itself to that, back to that place of restoration. And so because you're looking for something that's supposed to be in your body, that's a part of your brain that's not there, now you're on a galoot. Now you're on a galoot and you're on a cycle and you don't even know why. You don't even know why because you're dealing with an invisible enemy. But once I found that out and God gave me the revelation, he said, and the only way a person can be set free is through the power of God. That's why people go to drug rehab and they rehab, relapse. That's why people go to, you know, they go to different programs and they relapse. But it takes the supernatural power of God mm -hmm. to deliver a person and cause that person to become an overcomer that they never, ever have to look back again. That they can go on to know the Lord and they can actually begin to walk in their destiny. And that's what happened to her. When I went in and shared my testimony, I taught that class. She would go back to her dorm and she would hear my voice echo. She would hear the sound of God echo, echo that brought her in a place that once she got out, once she got out, I didn't let her go just like that. I followed up. I followed up because she was a part of my assignment. And 20 years later, she still is. Amen. And so here we are today and we are giving God some glory. Amen. Amen. And so now God has brought you out. You, you know, you're set free. 20 years strong. That's two decades. Yes. That is two decades. And that's decades. a that's a uh, Ecclesiastic 3 and 14 moment. I'm, I'm going to always give y'all the word, okay? Because that's the only thing that's going to stand. God said, what he do is done forever. Amen. That men might fear him. So when God deliver a person, he don't take it back. It's up to us to go back. And God don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. So now God has brought you out. He has. And now you're on a journey, my woman. You're on a journey, woman of God. You were on that moment, you went from there, and now you're here. Yes. Tell us about some of the, tell us about what has happened, how God has, tell us about some of your accomplishments. I know you You got two beautiful children. And three. Three. You got three beautiful children. And I see that they're all being successful in their careers, and you know, you you, you got a husband, you got, you know. And guess what, y'all? She's my accountant as well. She does <laughs> She does my taxes. Amen. She does my taxes. She's been Amen. doing my taxes now for about 20 years. About 20 years. So I had to go to the Polk County Jail, amen, to get Matthew. Matthew, you know, y'all know Matthew was a tax collector, right? Yes. Amen. She's not a tax collector, but she does Amen. taxes. Amen. So this is just a beautiful moment. But tell us about some of the things that God is doing in your life right now. Well, um, I started back. First of all, I got my GED while I was locked up, Come which on. gave me credit off of my sentence. And that gave me more hope more hope to come out and go to college. I challenged myself to do dual enrollment. What you say? So I did bachelor degree at the same time, getting my master's degree mm -hmm. in business finance. So after that, I challenged myself again to go back to school for cosmetology because I love playing with hair. Okay. So I did accomplish that as well. So I am a licensed cosmetologist. And I just, I just thank God because God has been amazing in my life. Um, now I own three businesses and a ministry. So I have Parish Business Services, which is a tax business, as well as an accountant and payroll services. I have Gifted Hands with the Heart, which is a health agent, home health agency. I also have Boss Lady Commercial Cleaning Services, which we do uh, cleaning in various places. 
Um, so God, and then I have Women of Wisdom Outreach Ministry. Wow. So God has really been amazing. And I have three of the most amazing children in the world. Can't talk for yours, but I can talk for mine. What you say? And God has gave me a wonderful husband, a friend, a lover, a provider. And one, one great thing about it, he's all mine. Amen. Amen. That is so beautiful. Amen. Can we just can we just clap our hands for the Lord on today? Amen. Amen. That is so beautiful, y'all. She was running through that resume and I could not keep up with her. I could not keep up with her, but what you know what, what I heard the Spirit of God saying? She came out and she perfected. She perfected the gifts and the talents that the Lord has given her. That vision came alive Amen. and she began to run with it. And I think you said you got three or four businesses? Yes. She got three or four businesses. That's multiple streams of income. Yes. Multiple streams of income. So do we see the untapped potentials? Do we see the untapped potentials that this woman of God here is carrying? And even though she was doing taxes, she went back to school and she perfected that. She perfected that. So what does the word of God say? Make your calling and your election sure. Amen. Knowing this one thing that you will never ever fail. So I just, I'm just so excited about what God is doing here and how God is actually restoring his people and how God is now bringing us back to the front of the line as a demonstration of his glory to give people, uh, to give people hope. Some people don't have any hope today. And that's what this Let's Talk is about. We're here today to bring hope to those that are down in the trenches. We want to come and pull you out today. Amen. We want to bring you. We want you to come with us. We don't want to come by ourselves. We want to, we, we're here today as a testimony of Jesus Christ. And so, woman of God, you've done some great things here. You've done more than I could have. I've done. But that's not even to compare because we, we, you know, everybody got their own. Amen. Everybody have their own lane. But I just celebrate with her today. Amen. I celebrate with her today for all that God has accomplished through her and all that God is going to do yet through her. And then the most beautiful thing about it as well is, amen, that uh, she's now giving bite to so many. You go into the jails as well, right? Yes, I am a jail yeah. volunteer. So she's a volunteer now at the Polk County Jail. She, she's going back. Of course, they can't go in now because of COVID. But she's she went back to the Polk County Jail. Amen. Amen. To go back and to deliver those that are still bound. Sharing her testimony. So that's the power of God. That's what we want to do. When God bring us out, we want to go back and get those, amen, that God has, that, that we left behind. Amen. So anything else you want to say to the people today? Anything? I would just say to those that are going through uh, loved ones, you have someone that's out there that's struggling. Many people don't want to run right to Christ. Find someone that is an overcomer. Stick with that person and let them lead you to your destiny. Amen. So we know that there are people out there, amen, that are struggling. And, you know, your, drug, your, your addiction may not be drugs, mm -hmm. but it's an addiction. It's an addiction. It's an addiction. There are many forms of addictions. Amen. But we want you to know today. That there is hope and we are a demonstration. You know, the Bible says the gospel has to be demonstrated. Yes. The gospel has to be demonstrated. Paul says signs and wonders shall follow those that believe. And so let's talk about, let's, let, let's back up a little bit and let's talk about some pain. Okay. What was the source, what was the root of some of your pain? Because uh, the Bible says he's the God of all comfort. Amen. That he comforts us in our tribulations that we can now go back and comfort others. So you say you came from a dysfunctional family. You came from a broken family. A broken home, dysfunctional family. And I'm pretty sure you can write a whole book. Oh, yes, God. About a lot of things that happened in that. You know, um, so what were some of your, thank you, Holy Ghost, trauma? Were you traumatized? I was traumatized because, of course, um, coming from a broken home and a dysfunctional home, it did traumatize me. But I didn't really know I was traumatized until I got caught up in the world of drugs uh, and abuse, um, allowed men to abuse me. That's when I found out uh, that all of it tied in together. But through my deliverance, I was able to learn what triggered me and what set me back. Then I was able to be free from those things and walk in my authoritative place. And see, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother, um, talk show right there. That's a, that's a whole nother conversation right there. But I wanted her to pinpoint some of her points, some of her 
uh, points of pain so people can understand that, you know, when you're dealing with trauma, when you're dealing with trauma, a person that deals with trauma, when you're traumatized, and as you said, she said she was molested, she was abused by men, but she had to go back and she had to discover those trigger points. Because when trauma comes, emotionally, a person shuts down. And that person, they go into survival mode. They don't know anything about grace. They don't know how to live life out loud. Yes. They don't know how to pull on God for strength. Right. Those people live from day to day. They live from day to day, from moment to moment, and they will depend on whatever they can to bring any kind of relief, any kind of freedom. And so I just want to even encourage you all out there today, dealing with people with trauma, know that the average person, till you see the drug addict on the corner, you see the prostitute going through the cycle, but you don't know her point of pain. You don't know her point of pain. So what do we do? You need to stop. You need to get off drugs. You need to stop doing this. You need to stop doing that. What is my point of pain? What is my point of pain? Can you go back to that thing that triggered me? Can I go back and discover that root cause that I could go in and uproot that thing and pull that thing out that that thing has no more life and it has no more connection to my life, to my life. So I wanted her to bring that out some of her points of pain that would, that even led her into those areas, that led her into those areas that caused her to, you know, to be bound and on this roller coaster for 20 years, 20 years and wanting to go to jail. Why? Because we couldn't find help. We couldn't find any help out here. No family, no friends. Come on, talk about that. There was no family, no friends that offered hope for me. There was no, none of the church people I knew offered hope for me. Church people? Not church Passed people. Passed by me. Church people. Not church people. Church people. No. Passed by me on the corner on a Sunday morning, on a Tuesday night, and didn't offer hope for me. They was, said they was going to see the king, but they didn't offer hope for me. They said they were going to serve the master, but they didn't offer hope for me. They didn't stop to pray with me. They didn't stop to give me an encouraging word. More or less, they talked about me. But I knew a man that came to see about me. Isn't that something, you know, uh, church people, you know, they'll do you like that. Yes. But you know what I learned in the process of that? People can only give you what they have. And if they don't have it, they can't give it to you. Oh, all right, come on. They, if like they that. don't have it, they can't give it I to like you. That. I like and a that. lot of people didn't have it, and they don't have it still right now today. But that's why the scripture says, that's why we got to always rely on the word of God. That he's the God of all comfort. Uh. That he comforts us in our pain, mm -hmm. in our agony, in our trials and tribulations. That now we can go back and we can comfort somebody else. And that's why we have so much to give. Amen. That's why we have so much to give, woman of God, and this is our hour. Amen. This is our hour, this is our time, and this is our season. Yes. And I just say unto you today, the best is yet to come. All right. The best is yet to come, and I just even see doors opening for you. I see doors opening for you. Matter of fact, I see, I see women. I see a, a train of women. And when I see a train, I see a line of women. I see women that are waiting in line. Amen. They're waiting in line for what you, for what you have. Like They're that. waiting in line for the creativity. They're waiting in line for the prophetic. They're waiting in line for you to just speak into their lives mm -hmm. and give them hope. And I just even hear the Lord say today that I have made you a spectacle to many. Right. I have made you a spectacle to many. And I just even hear the Lord say today that there are people that are watching you. They're watching, they're watching you in just your life. They're going to be able to draw oil from that. They're going to be able to draw hope from that. They're going to be able to draw even those that are looking today and those that will even look at the show. Amen. You're going to look and your, your testimony is going to be just like hers was. When I went into that Polk County Jail and when I preached that gospel and she went back to her dorm and she said, if God did it for that lady... God is able to do it for me. Amen. So even today, someone is drawing strength from our testimony today. Somebody is drawing, somebody is uh, uh, receiving hope that they never ever had before. Yes. And so I just even prophesy to you today. I even prophesy to those today that still have loved ones that are out there, that are still down in the trenches. Those that are still addicted. We just release the power of God unto you today. We declare and decree yes, today God. the transition. Thank that there's God. a paradigm shift that is taking place. And you are being translated from darkness. Mm -hmm. From kingdom of darkness into God's marvelous light. We declare and we decree today. 
that you receive your spiritual lineage, that you receive your spiritual inheritance, that we re that you receive your portion today. We break the power of drug addiction over your life today. We break that spirit of uh, you're looking for the dopamine to replenish. Mm -hmm. We declare and we decree and we release the power of God, the yes. supernatural power of God to chase you down in the realm of the spirit. We declare and we decree today that you will have encounters just like she had encounters, amen, that the word of the Lord would come back and visit her. We declare and we decree today that the words, the word of the Lord today will not fall on deaf ears and it will not fall on the ground. We matter of fact, we pulled the demonic wipes out of your ear today. That everything that has unstopped your ears that, that for you not to hear. We declare and we decree today, they that have ears. Amen. They that have ears shall hear what the Spirit of God Amen. is saying. Jesus. We break every generation of curse. We break every mind-binding spirit. We take authority. We take control yes. over every childhood hurt, every dysfunctional home that you came out of. We cut the umbilical cord on yes, that today. Jesus. And we release the glory of God into your lives today. We release the glory of God into your homes today. We break every curse off of your life on today. We come as representatives of Jesus Christ today on your behalf today to say this is your time, this is your hour, this is your season, and Satan, your expiration date has come. You've had, you've had enough time. You've had enough time with God's people. But today... Amen. We're coming to pull them up out of those hard places today. Up out of those places of being hopelessness. The spirit of learned helplessness. We break you today in the name of Jesus. And we declare and we decree today that your latter shall be better than your former. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And so we just want to say I thank you today for being a part Amen. of Let's Talk with Apostle Mary Richardson. Thank you for being Amen. my guest today. And I, I just appreciate God. How God has sustained you. Yes. How God has sustained you and how God has just even, you know, developed you and cultivated you and given you your family bite. Amen. And the Bible says your latter shall be better than your former. Amen. My God, my God, my, my God. God. I'm looking for What a word. What do you already walking in it? All Amen. of this. Amen. All of this that I couldn't even have enough to write with. Amen. Amen. But we just thank God for you today. And we know that you have been a blessing to the people out there today. Amen. And I just encourage you to continue, you know, doing what you're doing. You know, continue to just be transparent and just continue to be you. Amen. Amen. And so thank you all for joining today. Thank you all for y'all comments today. Amen. And I want to give you an opportunity today to sow into, uh, to, to partner with me. Partner with me. Amen. So we can continue this work. We can keep this work going. That we can bring in different uh, vessels, different voices, different testimonies, a demonstration of God's glory. Amen. Substantial evidence that cannot even be debated. Cannot even be debated. Remember the man over in Acts the third chapter? They could not even debate that. Surely this man came from his mother's womb. Imp uh, incompetent. Impotent. But guess what? They could not deny the fight when they saw that man in the temple praising God. You cannot deny the fight what God is doing in our lives. Amen? Amen. So my cash app is on the screen. Amen. On the screen. Go ahead and cash app today. Amen. And help support. Help continue the work of what God is doing in the kingdom of God through our lives. Amen. And so next week we got another awesome man of God that's going to be with us on next week. So you want to set your dial. Uh, log it into your phone. Google it. Amen. And so God bless y'all. Thank y'all for joining. Thank you for your comments. And this has been another episode of Let's Talk with Apostle Mary Richardson. And with that being said, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap, y'all. Amen. God